Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Cartel Hour, where we do live tastings and discussions of all kinds of spirits with the people who make them, use them, and enjoy them. My name is Cameron Stevens. And my name is Seth Benheim. Together, we're covering everything from familiar bottles to rare and exclusive releases from near and far away. If it's distilled, it's on the podcast. Featured in Rolling Stone, GQ, Men's Journal, and more, we bring celebrity guests, master distillers, and industry veterans to chat about the latest in the spirits world. On this episode, we have Paul John Indian Single Malt Whiskey. From the coasts of Goa, Paul John is making sure they do every possible process of the whiskey making in and authentic to India. We were joined by the whiskey monster himself, Karai Ozdemir, brand ambassador to Paul John and independent taster of thousands of whiskeys, as well as Jeremiah Caleb, bartender from one of the most prominent Indian restaurants in Los Angeles, Spice Affair. If you've ever wanted to know more about one of the fastest growing regions of whiskey, listen on. We're here to learn a little bit and drink a little bit, so grab a glass and let's enjoy. Right, welcome back to the Infusory for another episode of the Cartel Hour. My name is Cameron Stevens. And my name is Seth Benheim, and today we have an excellent episode uh, ahead of us. Yes. Uh, Cam, what are we drinking? We're drinking Indian whiskey, and we've got Paul John. We've got a whole lineup of Paul John yes, we do. products in front of us. But even um, more importantly, we've got two very and special we've got guests. guests to taste it with us. So, uh, um, yeah, uh, Jeremiah, why don't you start and introduce yourself, and then we'll uh, then we'll move on to Karai. Excellent. I'm Jeremiah Caleb. And, and what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I run the bar program at a restaurant in Beverly Hills called Spice Affair. It's an upscale Indian restaurant. Yep. If you've been anywhere in the area, you can't miss the the sign, and it's an excellent restaurant. Yes. And we carry the products, which is very exciting. Yes, cool. I met uh, Jeremiah when I was selling bitters and whiskey uh, in my, you know, in my days out on the road doing sales for my company. And then um, it's also it's, it's also worth noting it's across the famous uh, Stinking Rose, the yes. garlic restaurant. So literally across the street, yeah, uh, on that corridor. You kind of can't miss both La of them. Cienega, yeah. uh, pretty much La Cienega and Olympic, basically. Yes, North, La Cienega and Wilshire, actually. Last year again, Wilshire. Wilshire, yeah. Perfect. Uh, and then Karai, why don't you introduce yourself? Hello, all. Thank you for having me. I'm Karai Ozdemir. I'm the West Coast Regional Manager, aka Brand Ambassador uh, for Paul John Indian Single Malt Whiskey. And I'm so happy to be with you guys, even if I'm not there personally. This also works for me. That's okay. We're happy to have you. And you have a really fantastic setup over there, man. Like, yeah. uh, that looks great. Yes. I think, like, all the brand ambassadors are everyone working in the whiskey business telling the stories of whiskey and like we just turned out to be TV producers right now. And we, we are working <laughs> yes, on setups we're, we're like doing the virtual duty. Setup. Yeah, now, Karai, just, you are also uh, pretty popular on Instagram, uh, which I didn't know getting into this whole episode until someone was like, oh, he's also the whiskey monster at whiskey okay. monster. So I looked you up, you got like 15,000 followers and you're doing all kinds of shit with whiskey. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, so actually, that was the birthplace. I, I had to go really uh, years ago. So I used to be a civil engineer. So my education is on civil engineering. I studied it. I did my master's. I have a master's degree. Then I worked as a civil engineer. But during that time, I spent almost a year in Denmark. And somehow my university didn't accept my credits. So I decided to be a bartender uh, just okay. to enjoy my time. And at that place, I learned the secrets of uh, craft beer, what we call craft beer, what I call Belgian and Danish beers. And then I also learned about single malts. And I loved the story of both. And I went back to Turkey, studied, I worked as a civil engineer. But at the same time, same time I opened this club, uh, which was in Turkish at the time. It was called Keyfadamun.net, Keyfadamun.net, which, which does mean men of pleasure. But we okay. use that term to describe people who enjoy drinking and eating a lot in Turkey. And it took off. Like my experiences with beer and whiskey and wine, it took off really quickly. We did a lot of educational events. We did a lot of tastings with my friends over there. 
uh, then I started uh, organizing events with the company as well, just on my own about whiskey and that was like incredibly famous that took off really quick every event was sold out then I said that okay I love telling people about whiskey I love beer and wine too but whiskey in specific is incredible so how can I do more and I decided to get more education traveled abroad and all the time like I was having so much fun and I decided okay maybe I should do this job for like good and nice in 2016, I quit my day engineering job and I started working as like a consultant. And luckily, I got a green card from the state, so I decided to move here. And I actually did a little bit of sales in San Francisco. I was the spirit buyer for a retail location here. Then, but all I wanted to do was I wanted I wanted to talk whiskey to people, get them to know more, give my knowledge to them. That was my main goal, and still is. And since I moved to US, I had to change the name of my website to English. So I created the Whiskey Monster when I moved here. That's where it came from. Yeah. Uh, Whiskey Monster was like, the name is coming from, we were checking the available domains online and we saw that, oh, Whiskey Monster is open. Why didn't they want to take that? Let's take that. (laughs) (laughs) They probably took it with an E. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it it's, it's it's taken. But you know, for me, I, I always loved single malt, so I, I'm all the times I'm using uh, whiskey without the e. So, but they are the same thing. It's just you know pronunciation. I yeah. want to get into how you ended up with Paul John, but I also want to really introduce the category. And so we're talking about Indian single malt whiskey, and I'm sure many people that are going to listen to this episode are unfamiliar. And one of my questions, really, and Jeremiah, start us off here. When someone walks into your bar, they walk into an Indian restaurant and they see or maybe are asking a question that would lead you into the category or discussion of Indian whiskey, how do you introduce the category to someone? And Karai, when he gives his answer, tell us if you, if, if you, if you uh, would add anything to that. Yeah, so yeah. Let's, let's sure, hear that. Sure, sure. So this is really uh, interesting because majority of our guests are Indian. <laughs> and they're uh, middle-aged Indian men who love single malt. And they've been drinking this uh, a certain way for most of their lives. Mm-hmm. And usually you get the Johnny Walker, you get a McAllen. So it's something that's very common uh, and they know it. And they, they, they each have a recipe of how they like it. So, you know, one either just drop of soda water or a drop of water and they have it exactly. So I find myself trying to introduce not only to Americans, I'm introducing Paul John and uh, our ad- other Indian whiskeys. Like which ones? Like what like other Amrut, ones? Amrut, yeah. Rampur. Rampur. Yeah, um, those sure. are the three that we, you know. And so the way to introduce that is to make uh, barrel cocktails. So we started barrel programs. Okay. Or do flights. Because someone isn't likely to just order something they don't know when yeah. they look at the menu. Uh, but if you can, if you can kind of introduce it in a cocktail and then they go, oh, what's that? We'll say, well, here's, it's a whiskey from India. That's, that's distilled in India. And do you describe the taste or profile to be different to a guest than, say, a familiar scotch or blended scotch? I do. Um, and I, I, what I you tend to do is pair it with the food. Okay. And I sure. say, well, this is, this is distilled in India. Um, there, are certain, um, there are certain qualities that really bring out Indian food try this but they get a taste of the alcohol before they even eat the food so yeah that's kind of how i i ease that in there i think the food pairing is something i do want to circle back to absolutely um Um, well karai what kind of what would you add to that in terms of how you describe indian whiskey but also specifically for people uh, you know against the traditional things that um you might order otherwise. And then of course, you know, let's at a certain point we'll want to pop in and see what Paul John is doing differently as well too. So uh, when you speak about Indian whiskey, we are actually not speaking about either Paul John, Amrut or Rampo. Until like last, until 10, 15 years ago, we were talking about a category and which is still the best selling whiskeys of the world. So n- not a lot of people know this, and that's a, that's a really important thing, but the best-selling whiskey of the world is actually Indian. And in top 10, there are seven Indian whiskeys, and it's actually this bottle. What? 
This is what called is this Officer's specifically. Tell people what you're holding up. Yeah. yeah. So For this is Officer's, Officer's Choice. This is the American version of uh, the best-selling whiskey of the world. And actually, this is, right now it's the second best-selling. The first one changed uh, this this year. But the main thing is all of these whiskeys, like seven whiskeys in top ten, which are competitors to Jim Beam or like uh, Johnny Walker. Uh, all these whiskeys are technically not whiskeys. Like if we have to, if we had to bring them all the way to the U.S. with the same composition, we couldn't. We cannot call them whiskeys. We can technically call them rums because they're as uh, grain spirits blended with molasses spirits, which makes them the uh, best at the best case from. However, India calls them whiskey, so we call them whiskey in the world. That does count it as a uh, whiskey world. Uh, that being said, India consumes around one and a half billion liters of whiskey in a year. Good, that's good for them. In, I can appreciate that. <laughs> in, U, in US, we only consume around five or 600 million liters, so one third of the number. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. And the and, of course, being three times the size sure. can lend to that. In, in of course, like there's the price issues and everything, but another main issue is like um, importing whiskey to India is big problem so because it's too expensive there are a lot of uh, excise tax and everything so the brands who can manage it are actually big brands like johnny walker or uh, show Strangle. so what's happening is all the indians until 15 years ago they knew high quality whiskey as the scotch blends like teachers or johnny walker or shoes or if they are a little bit lucky they know Glenfiddich. so 15 yeah. years ago single malt category started to become really important for India. So it started with the Amrut, uh, then Paul John came into the scene, then Yat Rampur is the newest player in the game. And they all started to make actually good whiskeys, like not uh, blended with molasses spirit, but single malt whiskeys that started to arise from those. So if you ask me like when somebody order Indian whiskey, we should think about it because, you know, the perspective of those people who are ordering Indian whiskey can be different. If, it, if it's a young per person, I would say, okay, single malt could be what they order. But if it's an older, elder person, I would say, okay, they want either like the original Indian whiskey or maybe Johnny Walker's. And stuff. Uh, that, that, that's a different aspect. But yeah, like nobody knows this really well. This is a really interesting fact. Like the best selling whiskey that is coming from India and the most whiskey consuming country of the world is actually India. That's amazing. So Karai, I, you know, I think we're all a little thirsty and we've, we've, yes, our, glasses, <laughs> our glasses have been sitting uh, idly for at least 15 minutes, which is more than appropriate. So uh, yeah, why don't as, we hop into the first dive one? into the first bottle? Why don't you tell us a little bit? Uh, so, none of us have had this uh, before no, I, uh, nope. in this room. So. We are. This is actually our newest whiskey. That's why you didn't have this. Uh, we, this is the Nirvana. Right this is the Nirvana. We just got the product in the U.S. in uh, three days before shelter in place. Let's put in that way. <laughs> got it. So Nirvana is our uh, entry-level whiskey. Uh, we just have introduced it in Europe a year and a half ago, and it was a great success. So we decided to do it here, too. And the idea is coming from, you know, most of the whiskeys that we have in our portfolio, they are exciting, they are robust, they are a little bit like uh, flavorful and strong. And the least alcohol we have on any bottle is 46% ABV, which is 92 proof. So that was a lot for some people. That's why we wanted to introduce something on the lighter side. And Nirvana is that. Nirvana is at 80 proof, 40% ABV coming from our second and third field bourbon barrels and is younger than the other whiskeys. So we wanted this whiskey to be our entry level whiskey. And at the same time, I don't know what Jeremiah thinks, but we are using these, uh, we started to use Nirvana in the cocktails, which gave us incredible results. And I'm looking forward to taste it together at your restaurant one day. I was gonna say this out. appears really nicely with the cardamom. We yes. have a really nice cardamom oh, cocktail. Yeah. There's a um, nuttiness to yeah, this as a whole uh, that's actually really, really pleasant. It's on the nose and definitely in the body as well. I get bits of orange blossom mm, and a little yep. bit of pear as well. It's really It's bright. fruity on the nose, it's right? It's bright on the yeah. nose. Very, very bright. Very effervescent. Um, but as you drink it, it does have those rich 
malty, almost uh, nutty or chocolatey um, character. I can't put my yeah. I don't. Which. It doesn't go quite into the chocolate realm, but it's it, it's like a it's yeah. It's like a nut maybe nuttiness. It's the, maybe it's the bitterness. Um, there's just a perfectly balanced uh, a bitterness to it that I really enjoy. Yeah. And for me, okay, so at 40%, you, you're going to expect it to be a little bit lighter in the body. And it is. Yeah. It kind of does uh, fall off the palate a little bit quicker than I would like because I, too, like the bigger, more robust whiskeys. However, I think that can make it really excellent to pair with food just because it is very, very drinkable. And it can be, an, you know, I imagine this is an easy conversation starter with food kind of a this thing. Would go with fish, yeah. I think. I could see this with a little fish. Um, what do you what do you think? What are you getting on this? Th that's what I said. I think it it would go really nicely with the cardamom. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a liqueur that it would pair really nicely. It's called pavan. 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 I, I, lo I love I love that. I love awesome. that. Yeah. yeah. And musket grapes in the south of France. Oh, Ooh, yeah. it is a little bit vinous as yeah. well, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. It's a nice starter. Yes. To, uh, this it, this carries all the DNA for Paul John. You will see that like with every other bottle. So especially when it comes to classic with this one, because we don't have the brilliance, so you're not going to say see one step. But when we are going to rise on the classic, you will see how it develops in time and with the different barrel composition. Yeah, and so when you say this, also, so this is one of the newer products, a little bit less in alcohol, but you say it carries the same DNA as the rest of the Paul John John line. What is that DNA to you? How would you describe that? So wonderful question, uh, Paul John. We have a style that's really important for us because when the idea was born, it was born from our chairman, Mr. Paul P. John, and he came up with the idea of making this high quality single malt whiskey because we are also producing one of those best selling whiskeys of the world, which is called the Original Choice, and it's made in John Distilleries. And what we wanted was to make a high quality single malt. And he wanted it to be purely Indian. That's why we are using Indian ingredients, which is Indian barley, Indian water. We make everything in India. We, from uh, malting. From grain to glass. To, yeah, from grain to glass and to bottling. And then all the product comes from India. That's what we wanted. And the half style actually is coming from there because we use an Indian grown six row barley from Rajasthan, which is north of India. Six row. And that's and, true. Okay. That's true of all of the whiskeys we'll taste today. That yes. Is all Every, everything, everything is made with six row barley. Is the peated malt also peated in India or is that a Scottish import? Peated malt is peated in India. We, oh, that's we, awesome. import, the, we import the peat in bulk to India. We send them to the malting facility, the company. They peat smoke it for us, and they send the malt, uh, malt to the distillery. Peat coming from Scotland? Yes. So you uh, two different peat regions. Peat. in India. Because I would have thought, so I know, a, I know a manufacturer here in California who imports uh, already peated malt Green, that yeah. he will then distill yeah. into a peated American whiskey. But I love knowing that you go one step back in that you get the malt uh, locally and you get the peat uh, sorry the malted barley locally and you get the peat imported so it is that rich same peated uh, characteristic of a peated scotch because our whiskey takes its roots from the barley itself our barley is really important for us because normally traditionally in scotch production or in any single malt production uh, the barley type that's used is two row barley uh, two row barley gives you a lot of carbohydrates, uh, it, it creates a high volume of alcohol. Uh, and six row barley on the other hand uh, is composed of a lot of proteins, which helps us later during the age, uh, during sitting process. And at the same time, we have a less volume of alcohol, but we want to use it because it gives us a creamy texture, like that chewy texture you can even feel in Nirvana. Then you have those wonderful uh, fruity flavors coming up from there. So that's what we want to use. And if you want me to describe our, like, what's the DNA for Paul John, I would say chocolate fruits and honey. Like, there are two major flavors that work in every single whiskey that's coming from Paul John Distillery, even if it's, like, a finished whiskey in uh, different barrels. So I can say that these two are the signature flavors 
uh, Manuka honey is like a, a little bit darker style of honey. And coming from New Zealand, I don't know if you can find it. And tropical fruits. Those two are amazing. And you also feel that creamy texture, which is really important for me when I'm tasting Kota. One of the cool things about Nirvana is the price point. I was going to say. Yeah, what's it I, at? I have to add it here. This one is coming at $29.99 on retail. Wow. Yeah, wow. That's not bad at all. Oh my gosh. It could be a nice well as well. It could oh, be an amazing well. Oh, yeah. I have one last question on Nirvana. Um, we talked about what, what second and third fill barrels. What about age? None of these, oh. just these in front of us have age statements, but any general uh, concept would be, would be lovely. Honestly, we don't state ages on the bottles, not because we are afraid to state it, just because uh, Paul John doesn't believe that age is the main issue with the whiskey. It's, it's ready a, when it's ready. Yeah. yeah. It, like, it's not the main indicator of quality. We don't believe that. But you uh, did but, say Nirvana was the youngest of the bunch. Yes, so. I, I will say the age. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, but I want to ask you, what, what do you think the age is? Ooh, well, oh, I'll, man, I'll answer. Um, I would have to guess the age is a blend of, um, I go three to five. At uh, least. I'm at like two to four. I was at three to five. Yeah. Um, predominantly three, but maybe some five. Jeremy? Yeah. I was going to go with the hard five. Hard five. Yeah. Okay, this is, you were spot on, three to five. Three to five. <laughs> so technically, if we had to call <laughs> this, it's a, it's a three-year-old. Let's call it that way. Uh, but, you know, Paul John Whiskey is always improving. Oh, we, we are a young distillery. We are talking about like 12 years in production right now. So gotcha. we are always changing. Our products, our core range has always been improving. And that's why we are like keen on telling the truth, being transparent. Uh, whatsoever uh, we will always be transparent about it this is a three to five year old thing it sounds young but however the conditions are in india it's really different uh, about with the humidity and temperature and it can yeah. Show to you. Oh, yeah i'm guessing it's it's maybe similar to kavalan in terms of the 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 speed at which things age just due to that humidity um i'm I've only had yes. a few tastes of Cavalon in my life, so it's okay. hard. To, I've actually had more Paul John now in these bottles. Oh, really? Okay. Full disclosure, <laughs> I cracked some of these open over the weekend, and I drank some of them with, with some Yeah, friends you're hiding some, that behind the boxes. Some we, we love it. Share it. <laughs> we we Share got into it, guys. We yeah. got into it. Um, I, I couldn't wait. I was too excited. Um, but I am trying Nirvana for the first time, and my grade on it is a solid B. Um, honestly, I'm edging towards B plus for that price point. I think the B plus would, is indicative of the price in its category at that price point. I'd go B plus, but in the world of just all single malts and whiskeys and stuff, I'd go B. Yeah. Yeah. I'm at like a B um, minus B. Uh, the only thing that's kind of bringing me down a little bit is just the way that it falls off the palate, um, which as we kind of discussed can potentially have some positives when you're talking about pairing it with food. Um, but as a sipper, it's, it's, it's just a little bit lacking in that body. But that, the, the flavors are it, basically what it does is it makes me excited to see how that main DNA, as you were talking about, carries through the rest of them because it's quite yeah. good. What do you think? So I, I think I'm going to go on C on this one for the same reason. Okay. You're, but, at, you're at a C. Yes. It's okay. a lovely uh, whiskey, but it's not, it doesn't stand out to me. Got it. Fair enough. I can yes. appreciate that. Um, all right. So uh, let's go to the edited. So with edited, you have this small sign here at the very bottom with a hint of peat. So what we do is we technically get a, um, a huge tank filled to 85% with brilliance, our unpeated whiskey. And the rest of uh, the tank, we fill it with lightly peated whiskey. This is 5 to 10 ppm, if you're into that uh, oh, nerdy sure. level. Yeah, so this is 5 to 10 ppm which we call our lightly peated whiskey. Yeah, the alcohol level increased, the age increased, so, and at the same time, the barrels type yeah. changed. So you will get more flavors from it. It has this. a hint of peat. It has a hint of peat. I mean, for me, it's, 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 it's more than a little. It, like, when I think of a hint, I mean, I, I think of, like, faint peat. It's there. I mean, you, you know, if you don't like peat, this, you know, if you absolutely hate peat, this is not for you. But if you like peat, but you really don't need something that's going to like, you know, feel like a campfire all up, all up in you. Um, this is a really nice, well-balanced blend. It's funny because you mentioned um, Highland and Isla. 
Um, but it drinks to me like a space side almost in that it's a little, what you've created here, I would have, if I was blind tasting and I didn't think Indian whiskey was one of the categories I was drinking, I would have guessed the space side scotch in that it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Um, it's got a nice little backbone of like um, some like milk chocolate, which I really, really love on this one. Uh, that's a, that's a flavor you will get in a lot of bar whiskeys. Yeah. And it's interesting because a lot of the brighter citrus that, you know, the lemon, the pear, um, that stuff is now taking a nice back seat. It's still present, but now you've got additional complexity. You have a little bit darker richness here. And I, as far as I can see, the color is a slightly darker too, but that peat kind of really rounds it out. And what's nice about it is it, it's not just on the nose, it's not just on the body, and it never, it never cuts in in a sharp way in any aspect of that. It's really nicely rounded, hence the blend. I mean, it feels well blended. A little vanilla I'm tasting. Yeah. Are you, doing, are you tasting a little vanilla? There's like a little bit of a, a bit almost caramel. like taffy sweetness. Yes. Like salt water taffy sweetness, yes. which is really nice. And my guess is that's going to be from those uh, bourbon barrels, first and second fill. A little bit kind of bump up into that category. Yeah, yeah it's just, uh, you know, a little bit more ex extraction is coming up there. So that's really important, uh, what we are doing. Is a lot of this um, stuff we're going to have today ex-bourbon barrel? Um, most of, yeah. Oh, most God. of it is, there, right? Like, Christmas edition is going to change the game a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it is. Fair enough. Uh, the color alone, the Christmas edition out, is yeah. like... So Seth, yeah, where Christmas are you at? Still at a B, uh, maybe a B minus. If I had to guess, I'd probably be more in the in the realm of brilliance. Just having heard the way you describe it, I think the hint of peat creates a little bit of a uh, of a heat and sharpness to it that I I prefer. I'd, I'd probably really want to try the brilliance versus this one. Um, and having had the bold, I think I already like the bold better because it goes all the way into that. <laughs> It doesn't. It doesn't dabble. It goes all the way. Um, but I think, yeah, I'm at a B minus. Okay, fair enough. I actually quite like this one. I like it pretty significantly more than Nirvana. <clears throat> I do like the peat. I like the. I like the hint of it. I think it. I think it nicely balances actually, and I think it. I think it really rounds out the profile. I found Nirvana to be slightly one dimensional in that kind of fruitier, uh, brighter. Um, category and I really like the additional flavors that are coming in on this one. Forty six percent is giving it some extra body, which I'm liking. Yes. The lingering yeah. oiliness the there. Is I, good. I do, I do much like that. So that's where it lands for me. I've had the brilliance for I, so I would give this a B. Uh, th this, there's, this is a little more memorable to me. I think because it does, it does kind of linger afterwards. Yeah, it has a long it's a finish. Character and is what I'm looking for. It's a absolutely. I, I, I do honestly place this whiskey for the for the ones who are getting into peat. You know, this is yeah. not not disturbing your palate that much. You get the character of the peat. Highland peat tends to be sweeter, so this is you get that barbecue and uh, wood smoke coming up from there, and you also get like earthiness and the chocolate notes coming on your palate. Yeah, I like I like both the finish and the mouthfeel as sort of the tasting experience of that whiskey a lot better than Nirvana. But I actually just for some reason I thought Nirvana was really bright and fun. <laughs> yeah, and fair I enough. think I mean the price point on the edited is about double of the Nirvana, right? Yeah, this should be around fifty nine ninety nine. Yeah, and so at that for me, you know. Is it twice as good as Nirvana? For me, I, I personally would buy two Nirvanas. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. That's a good way to Quality look at it. Quality and quantity. Um, no, Three. so yeah. So I think next we're up on the bold. Whoa, sweet. New label here in the background. <laughs> no, we, it, it's just wish to self. I don't know how. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> well, I appreciate it. So That's... tell us about bold, right? <laughs> All right. Bold, bold was, um so bold is another style. The other style is, I told you that editors are lightly peated whiskey. It's not heavily peated. With bold, heavily peated is coming here to your glasses. This is 100% peated whiskey. And all of the 
peat we use for this whiskey is coming from Isla. So if you're a lover of Isla whiskeys, you will see a lot of traces from that. Yeah, already on the nose. Wow. Um, there, oddly, this one of the three is actually the sweetest to me. Um, mm. But that smoke flavor, that that char is prominent and beautiful. And for such a light whiskey, almost like a golden honey color, um, you'd be so surprised at how much flavor is packed in there. Um, the lingering, it's got a nice oiliness to it. I really like this one. Yeah. So can you tell us about, well, I guess maybe my question is, is your peating process any different from how they do it in Scotland? Do you do anything different in the peating process in India? So everybody knows that peating process, like traditionally they are done at pagodas, two story buildings. And, you know, they, you uh, start the fire from downstairs. It's just like, uh, honestly, it's not the same uh, with that style. Okay, let's put it this way. This is more fun. Oh, sweet. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is from the distillery. So okay. what happens is uh, we are doing the peating in the same way uh, any other commercial distillery does. Uh, that traditional way is still going on with a lot of distilleries, but you know a lot of bigger distilleries uh, are doing different things. So there are different methods uh, there. Um, Hopefully one day I will have the chance to go to the malting facility and I can take the videos of that. Nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but you know, it's not that different from any other countries. Um, I think the magical thing here is the barley that holds uh, the peat smoke. And with the Isla peat, I love how it uh, resembles the characters of the Isla peat, which is like uh, really incredibly uh, earthy. And you feel those medicinal smells, not a lot of it. Uh, it's still sweeter on the sweeter tones, like there's a lot of honey and tropical fruits. But then you feel like some earthiness, some chocolate notes are coming again. I think this whiskey amazes me with the palate. Greg, can you, can you speak a little bit about the demographic of people that, like, that love this one? Because this reminds so, me of, I feel like I'm sitting in a cigar bar. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, peat well. is something it would pair well. Peat is something that not every whiskey drinker can dive into. It requires maybe some past. I'm Turkish. I love smoky taste. That's why I, my first whiskeys were like I in sixteen and La ten, so it's understandable for me. Uh, but especially for American people, it's not easy to get into peated side of single malt because you know bourbon is sweet. The a hardest thing uh, traditional American palate with the whiskey got was rye whiskey, the higher proofs. But peat is a little bit different for uh, the demographics in uh, the USA. But peat is also something that as you drink, you will enjoy it. Mm. It just happens with time. It just happens with experience. And that's why we have the edited there, just to give you a softer experience and bold there with a heavier experience. Uh, but I would say that bold is mostly drunk by uh, seasoned drinkers uh, most yeah. of the time. And there's even a little bit of, even if you're, you know, you're warming up to it over time throughout your whiskey journey, but additionally, warming up to it through your evening. I mean, if I had started with this one, I think this would have blown out my palate. It's definitely pretty heavy on the beat, for sure. It is. Wait for the last one. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, the mouthfeel though really it almost dries out the palate. It mm. does so much, and I think that's what I like about it because that sweetness that I got on the first sip has really dissipated. And now, as I'm on my third, fourth, fifth sip, I'm like nursing this glass. Um, I'm starting to get into more of these sort of rich, woody, almost bitter notes. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I'm in like the bready realm too. I think there's like a like a fresh baked bread crust and nut background to the smoke too, you know? That's really nice. I don't know um, if you feel I the same way. Toast. Yeah. At the very back you have that coppery feeling which I love a lot. Like there was this metally feeling at the very end. Yes. It's a small yes. one, but I, I love that. Yeah, and there was also the yeah. a little bit like a high salinity, what I call 
you feel like some saltiness is going up there. You cannot call yeah. it salt. It's toasted like, sesame for me. Too. Yeah. Like yeah. I get like toasted sesame is yeah. something I'm getting. Uh, awesome. It, it just, I, I didn't get this. I didn't get the sweetness. This I'm, is a whiskey monster. <laughs> <laughs> How long were you saving that? I, honestly, I just, I, I wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't a dad joke. Okay, I'm not fair a dad enough, yet, so. So where are you at on it, Seth? I'm at a A minus. I freaking Ooh, okay. love this. I think it's awesome. Um, this for me jumps. You could throw this in a flight with your Lafroig, your Lagavulin. Yeah. I like this better than the Lagavulin 16, but maybe not like I, I'm a, you may know this about me. I'm a huge fan of the Lagavulin 8 uh, limited edition. Especially for the price. That's yeah. a, that's a me too. bottle. That, that's, that, a that's, bottle. that's a great display. But the, I would drink this and, I think it's in the price range of the Lagavulin 16. If I saw this, I think it would be a better conversation starter to bring this to a party and, and pour this for someone that was expecting Lagavulin and say, hey, try this, convert somebody over. That's an easy transition for me because this has all the, the tenets of what that whiskey brings to the table. Um, it's not as peated as like Ardbeg right, or Lafroy. Right. Oh, yeah, I think no. those... I don't know, Karai or, or Jeremiah, if you guys drink those peated whiskeys, but those really heavy, like PPM stuff, or Bruchladi, like the Octomor and those ones, those are a whole different planet. This is still, what are the PPMs? So this is around 30, 30 to 35. That's what I thought. It's approachable. Like, it's a generous uh, amount of peat, honestly. Uh, but it's not as far as high as the brands you stated. It's not yeah, the, I would have guessed the, higher than that. What's that? I would have guessed higher. Oh, I, I thought this was an approachable amount of peat that was really well balanced. I, I can feel this is not. I, I was drink. I, I just picked up the Ardbeg Wee Beastie, and that one. Yeah. It blows this thing like out of the peat world. I mean, it's, it's a fireball of no pun intended. A fireball <laughs> of peat. Uh, and that this is more nuanced. This is this is balanced for me. Got it. So you're at A minus. I'm at an A minus B plus. Like yeah, a, I'm at a ninety. I'm at like a B B plus. I'm at a ninety. Uh, I'm I'm worried that the I I actually well, I found. I want you to. <laughs> no, I now. will. I'm not worried. Worried. <laughs> I actually. Um, He's deeply concerned. I'm deeply concerned. I don't find it as balanced as you do. What's um, missing? What's missing for you? Well, so what I really liked about the edited was that I got brighter notes, I got chocolate notes, and I got a little bit of peat. This is a really well-rounded peated whiskey. Let's settle the I score. I don't get... Uh, do I like peat more than you do? No, because I actually like the big peat monsters. Okay. So, I, I so wasn't sure if that was a thing. No, 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 no. I, I I'm definitely not in this. aversion to peat. I mean, I hey, I can keep up with the Arbegs and the Lagavulins. Are I you have no peat? problem. I don't love peat. You don't love I peat. Don't, um, but I did love the edited because it was different. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, it's just a touch more balanced for me. I could be alone uh, so, here. I could be alone here. But that's, that's okay. okay. That's I okay. That's why, that's why you're, we have you're, you're, you're not alone, Seth. That's the beauty walk, of it. <laughs> I will walk that path and I will own that later. There you go. There you go. No, Jeremiah, gonna, what, what do you think? I'd give it a B. You had a B. So B. you guys are B. I'm at an A minus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I'm with you, A minus plus. Like I love this whiskey. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah. pretty fun. I, this, if you look at the whiskeys, I drank the most of this one. I, I put a dent in this bottle. No, and 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 actually, I'm out of B plus. B plus. I'm out of B plus. Um, yeah. B. I I think I said B B plus. Price, um, uh, price range on this. Same uh, with brilliance edited and bold barrel, sixty bucks. Now, really, that's as awesome. we move out of this category or level of of the of the portfolio, can we talk about age a little bit on the brilliance edited? Oh yeah. So, what do you think? Again, all of them are the same age, same barrels. Oh, they're older. <laughs> yeah. Is it cheating to go four to seven? Or <laughs> no, I mean these are these are. I think they're actually somewhat significantly older. I mean, I'm. I'm inclined to go to like I'm at five, eight I'm to, at five to seven still. Eight to you know, a blend of like eight to ten or something. I don't think so. Knowing that it's oh, still, well, no, they're only 12, still, years 12 years old. Years old so okay, so like seven. seven, yeah, it's like seven to eight. I mean, I think this is coming from their early stock. Let's put it that way. Right. 
five. I'll say five. Five. He's at a hard okay, five. The, okay, I will say the minimum age first. This is six years old. So minimum okay, six okay. years old. Okay. And blended with the whiskey is between six to eight years old. Oh, hey, I finally got one. Usually Seth beats my ass on this. I I think at this point I have to talk about the maturation process in India. Magical thing about Goa is Goa is uh, located in the southeast part of India. And it's a small, small state in India. Actually, it's the smallest state that I know. And our distillery is also located in the southwest of uh, Goa. And it's really close to the sea, so we have a tropical climate here. I'm talking about average temperatures of 90 degrees and average, like, relative humidity around 75, 80%. So the main thing is uh, we have those high temperature and high relative humidity, which helps us a lot during the uh, oak extraction and aging process. What I mean is when you put a whiskey and age it in Scotland and age it in India, in Goa, the outcoming results are really different. In yeah. one year, we, lo- we lose 8 to 10% of whiskey Whoa. to angel's share. Holy shit. Because of such high temperatures. And humidity. And yeah. High temperature and humidity. Humidity yeah. is coming a little bit more important there because oh, okay. Yeah, with, okay. humidity is going to play a huge with, re- with relative humidity around 75 to 80, when you put high temperature on top of that, you lose a lot of liquid uh-huh. from the barrel. Yeah. Um, that's a nerdy side. But in Scotland, this... Angel share amount is like one to three, two to four percent a year. So, uh, like really roughly, you can say that one year in Goa is like three, four years in Scotland when you compare the aging. I get that. Um, yeah. And when you have a six-year-old whiskey, it's not a six-year-old whiskey in Scotland. It's a different thing. We are talking about a, a whiskey which has more extraction, more oak quality coming from the uh, barrel itself. And when we are talking about that, we are actually talking about aging a little bit. But there's also other aspects of aging, like esterification, which is the period you, the liquid sits in the barrel and uh, profits from that time with some chemical reactions. That's another thing. But when we talk about like oak extraction, yes, India, Indian weather, tropical climate helps us a lot. And that's why like you're tasting a whiskey at six years old, but if you tasted a scotch at six years old, that would be totally different ex- uh, right. yeah. experience. Which and you're starting to see now. You're starting to see like, like that wee beastie I mentioned, like five-year-old, eight-year-old, you're starting to see age statement scotches that are coming out under the 10-year mark where 10 years ago, you would never, never. see a whiskey on the shelf with a 10, uh, under 10-year-old. Right. Uh, so Very rare. Thanks to Whiskey Master, I tasted like thousands of whiskey in the uh, last 10 years. The main thing is like Isla whiskeys are behaving pretty good to young ages. Like there are a they lot are. of good Kalilas or they're really nice like a Woolens, uh, the VBC, or if you have the chance to taste younger La Forest, they are really different and behaving good. There are also like incredible Speyside whiskeys like McCallum's. Like uh, I, I, I don't know if you ever taste it. But there are younger expressions in Italy from Macallan just created for the Italian market. I did not know that. I have not they, had no, the, they, not, they, yeah. they are they are quite extinct right now, but uh, like the, 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 there's a great seven year old I tasted. It was incredible. Um, so there there are young whiskies which can be really successful. However, not all of the distilleries can produce uh, that quality. It's up to the barrel, it's up to how you mature the whiskey. And yeah, maybe Isla whiskey, with Isla whiskeys, it might be a little bit uh, more common to have the younger whiskeys in their ranges. But Speyside and Highland does not that much. But when you go to Kavalon, they have a good whiskey in like four years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because the aging you, is so you, fast. It's yeah. the same thing as India. Like it's, 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 yeah, the age of the years. 12 yeah. to 13% over there, if I'm not wrong. So that, that's an incredible level. Uh, but that's also a level that you have to be careful because in three months' time, our whiskey changes character in the barrel. That, that's a really hard Constantly, thing to do. What a hard yeah, life. You, you, you got to ch- keep drink checking. all day. <laughs> so uh, our master distiller, Mr. Michael D'Souza, uh, he is an incredible character. Uh, hopefully you will meet him one day. Uh, but what he does is he has this big notebook right like, all the notes for each bottle he tastes. So the, the, the team in, in the distillery consistently t- t- uh, tastes everything 
going through all the barrels, just checking out how, how they are and how they're going to be used. And we also have some special bottles, uh, special barrels that we are using for our like limited editions. We also have two different warehouse styles. This, is, this might be interesting for you. Two of them are above the ground level, like an American Rick House style. And one of them is under the ground level. So we have an underground cellar uh, that we can reduce the temperature and humidity a little bit, just a little bit. So we can control it naturally and we keep our precious barrels uh, over there, which is where we are going right now because we are going to Christmas edition. Yes, I was going to ask. Let's, let's dive into the, the darkest Christmas. color on the table, hands down. Yeah, easily. Um, this is in the mahogany. Or, yes. Or so an, deep another distinctive branding. Color. Uh, so Christmas edition started in 2018. Uh, we started making Christmas, uh, Christmas edition. And everybody's asking, like, what does Christmas have to do with India? Like, that's weird. Uh, but Goa, where we have the distillery, has a huge Indian uh, Christian community. Because it was a Portuguese colony until 1964. And the main religion is still Christianity over there. Like most of the really? people are Catholic. Yeah. And that's why we started a Christmas edition in 2018. Uh, unfortunately, the first, uh, the first uh, edition wasn't in US. It was only for uh, Europe. And it sold out pretty quick. Then last year, we forced and we brought the 2019, which is a cast finish edition so we age the whiskey for five years in first for bourbon barrels then we age the whiskey further for two more years in pedro jimenez casks sorry and what kind of casks pedro jimenez, pedro jimenez. oh okay okay px sherry cask px yeah. Yeah. Uh, we get our barrels from a bodega in andalusia spain yeah so okay. that's a different one but there are like common problems with sherry casks because like there is now a huge demand on it so the bodegas in Shavery regions, they have this problem of not aging the whisk, uh, barrels with wine uh, for a longer time. But the bodega we are working uh, gave us incredible barrels aged with uh, Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso for a longer time. They are really precious for us. It's really hard to get those barrels. That's why we are actually uh, aging them in our underground cellar, uh, which is also reserved for our private barrels. Yeah. Got it. And I expect this to be somewhat of a limited edition. I mean, can we talk yeah. about how much is out there? Oh, um, I think we produce around 4,000 bottles of this. Oh. Uh, not, not, so not, not much. <laughs> it, it's, it's almost gone. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, we're and very I, lucky to have one then. <laughs> I, I can give you one, the wonderful news of we are working on the 2020. I was sending some mails in the morning. So nice, 2020 nice. is is almost on the way to uh, US. We hope it to bring around October time. If but you know COVID can impact everything right now, so it's not props. right. <laughs> and and what's our price point here? So let's taste. And I I will ask the price to you. Like how much would you pay for this? Let's go taste it. Oh, fair enough. Well, I, I like he's challenging us. I usually spend <laughs> I usually spend around you know. Five hundred dollars on a Christmas. <laughs> no. Um, first of all, let's before we jump into what we would guess the price is, um, let's talk about the whiskey because this is yeah. by far the most out of the glass smell and nose. I mean, it really leaps out. It brings this fruity note, this dark fruit note uh, to the whiskey that I have. Um, I have not gotten from any of the other expressions so far. It's kind of like plums and, and, yeah. and um, a little bit of that. Like raisiny. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Raisin. Um, I might, I might actually, I'm going to join you. I'm going to do a little more. Right. Yeah. yeah this yeah. one is. And what's oh, interesting is for me, the, the palate is both this rich, dark fruit. Like I said, plums, raisins, um, a little bit of kind of nutty, even like nutmeg, cardamom, like kind of Christmas-esque spices. Um, there's also a bright note to it. There's also this almost spearmint 
thing that's happening, which is a, it's a, actually a really pleasant contrast. Honestly, like the, the first smell I got from this whiskey when I first opened the bottle a year ago, it was, oh my God, this is a lot of pralines, uh, dark fruits coming up, cinnamon bar, nutmeg. Yeah, and, cranberries. Oh yeah. Yeah. And technically PX gives you a lot of those chocolatey and earthy notes too at the very end of the palate. This awesome. doesn't go too chocolatey, but it definitely goes a little earthy for me, for sure. My, my family, right, for Christmas and weddings, they make a spice fruit cake and they richen it in brandy for weeks oh my God. before the event. Oh, so wow. they poke holes in it. This Switching is the it? brandy out with this <laughs> is, would just take that a whole notch. I, I think th there's, a, there's a liqueur called Somrus. Have you ever heard of Somrus? No, I haven't. I have not, no. It's made in India. And it's uh, it's a cream liqueur, and it's saffron, rose, almond, oh, that sounds cardamom, beautiful. And I think that paired nicely would have nice. I would do a nice creamy martini, a nice cold creamy martini with this and that. Uh, oh, that would be amazing! I see yes. this with an alcohol uh, infused cake of some kind, something yeah. light, and and really uh, playing off those flavors because this is so dark and rich. This. Um, I'm in. I'm in the A range again. I'm try. I'm getting. <laughs> I'm back I'm in the getting A range. Damn close to that. And and what's great about it actually is for me, this isn't this isn't overly dark. You know, there's some things where you can get into those categories where it's like, um, oof, that's just too much like to leathery tobacco, and you're still actually in a still like a pleasant fruity range. Like you were talking about that kind of fruitcake type thing um it's very aptly named christmas because it certainly evokes uh feelings of that time of year for sure yeah i, I told I, to, I told you like at the very beginning like two flavors that we'll get from paul john honey tropical fruits they're never gonna leave like tropical fruits are really uh in this whiskey and as you said like Imagining this whiskey around a Christmas cake is amazing too. Like you feel a lot of that uh, cake, and like I love this whiskey. Uh, it it sounds like seasonal whiskey to a lot of people because it has Christmas on it, but you know, all year round. I think. Whiskey. I mean, I definitely think there is a disservice in what the average consumer would take away from seeing the label thinking that this is an after dinner holiday spice flavored spirit when really this is a year round after dinner cigar pairing yeah. you know um i'm getting a real leathery uh everyone always goes crazy when you say leather but leathery is this sort of dry um uh inelastic flavor that really grips the tongue and it really sort of is this grittiness. And this has that. The one thing I would say is that I would argue the DNA of Paul John has strayed, not in a bad way, but I don't get tropical fruit, rather right. dark I'll fruit. Right, I'll agree with that. And I I'll don't get that. honey. I get a really... Yeah, honey is, honey is minimal for me, too. I get like almost... Um, Toffee sugar, toffee Ooh, sweetness, yes. and I get a uh, a much richer, darker. The Nirvana um, has that honey, tropical papaya, oh, yeah. right? Pineapple. Oh so, yeah. This is like, you know, put me on a mahogany leather couch with a cigar and like you know a three piece suit. You know, that's <laughs> that's where I'm at with this. You get molasses. Enough. Yeah, I oh, do yeah. Get molasses. It, and it's it's like, like burnt sugary thing. Yeah. It's yeah, it's it's to me it doesn't get finish? quite get that? It's like you, you, you went around the word of demerara syrup. So what that, was that? that? Say it again. Demerara demerara syrup is like the burnt sugar um simple syrup you make with a lot of yes. dark sugar. Yeah. yeah. It's that, in that's that what, that's what you have. I don't, I don't think it goes quite leathery to me, but I understand the grippiness of the palate. It's it's quite good. I'm so you're in what a a minus a. I'm at like a ninety one. Okay. 92. I, I'm at a I'm at a ah uh, yeah. I think we've I think we've dipped into the a minus range for me on this one. I quite like it. I think it's um, I think it is it is an outlier in a good way. 
Uh, and I think it's a worthy detour off of the path of that DNA to see what the distillery itself is capable of. So that's, that's really cool to me. Gentlemen, I, this is A++++. Plus plus plus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. It makes me nostalgic. It makes me really nostalgic. And oh, awesome. I think it, it can be, I mean, it's memorable because it's unlike anything that I taste in any of the single malts that I've seen and brought this year. Yeah, and amazing. Yeah. Have you had other um, fortified wine and or sherry cask fit? Yeah, call sherry. Sir. Whiskeys uh, that, that this reminds you of or is this playing in... in, in into any other if you had to compare it for a listener who hasn't had this but might have had something else at your bar what kind of other whiskeys play in this realm for you i haven't tasted anything like this that that unique yeah it is very unique to me yeah it's perfect to hear thank yes. you yeah. that, and so i don't know if i mentioned this is also slightly peated I don't get any peat. Do you if get it's peat? there, it's an undertone. Yeah. It's yeah. certainly only embracing. It's slightly peated. It's writing on the bottle. I just forgot to tell you that. All of our Christmas editions are mildly peated. Can you do- say a hint of peat? I don't get peat. Can you do it at cast strength? Because I'll buy uh, it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would buy this. I would buy this in the 55, 110, yeah, 111. I mean, because yeah, I only. No. I'd love to just chew on this for yeah. days. It, and that's another thing. It's chewy. Let's talk about that after this. <laughs> like my jaws are going, going with this. Yeah. Okay. I, I would. So I would, this would be a good appetite because it, it. I feel hungry after this. Oh, okay. It makes me want to. See, yeah. I would go digest thief. I would counter mm-hmm. and say I would want this with my dessert. Yeah, I want with. with I would dessert. open. I would start my meal with yeah. Nirvana, and I would end it with Christmas. Give me this. Give me a duck. Give me all that. <laughs> yeah. Jeremiah wants oh, it duck. before, during, during, and dessert. after. <laughs> what? So Jeremiah, just to kind of just uh, let's we're we're four deep. Um, mm-hmm. What kind of foods would you pair if if somebody was ordering at the restaurant? What would you pair this with? I and would, what would you pair the other ones with? Definitely pair this with, uh, especially at our restaurant. I pair this with a biryani. Biryani. Which, which biryani. Is, yes, which is uh, it's traditional wedding Indian food. It's basically the rice and the meat and the spices are all slowly infusing together. Okay. And so uh, the way we make it is we cover it like a pot pie with, with saffron underneath. Oh. And so it just kind of infuses. Nice. When you open it, you just get this whiff of extravagance. Wow. And I think that this would just sort of bring. And what dish with the, with the peated, with the bold? What, what goes with the peat for you? It's, it's a harder to pair, yes. but. The bold, I would. Uh, the, also, the, let's start with the peated because that's my least favorite. <laughs> 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 Even though you guys love it. I would do something like with a shrimp or a um, um, scallop. Okay, like interesting. More of the you go seafood. Yes, okay, seafood. okay. Because it just really adds an interesting. It, it I just, could see uh, that. To me, yeah. Okay, I, I excellent. Um, and then as you get to kind of the, the softer, early, brighter, yeah, fruitier. The, the brighter, I would go with that. Uh, a butter chicken, a tikka masala. Yeah. Because butter those chicken. Are the Honestly, base. this to me, I was just like tikka masala. Yeah. Boom. I Instantaneously, that's that where my mind went. Like, oh, the yes. spice of like a vindaloo. Yeah. With uh, nirvana. Now, let's let not let's not pigeonhole ourselves into. Um, oh, I, th- I thought we were frozen. No, no, I, I was checking the food pairing list that I had. No worries. I will send so, it to you later. Oh, the food pairing. Yeah, list. please, yeah, we'll, please, that'd be great. I was thinking, you know, my mind was really opened up when we did our episode uh, with Graciela on the El Mayor, and she was telling us about Blanco tequila and sushi. And it really got me thinking about the broader food pairing. Paul John Nirvana, just to go back to it for one second, I mean, Mm -hmm. that with uh, a nice, you know, Japanese cuisine would go beautifully in my mind. I could see that. Because of the the softness of it whereas the paul john bold would go better with more of like american barbecue or more of that meaty uh i i would i like the i like the i like the um idea of some some, some brighter seafood though too i think that's why it yes, might be really both, diverse both. Yes, actually both. which is um, interesting to me one one would be sort of com- like comparatively you have like a big steak, like a big meaty steak, uh, with that peat. And I've seen people do that yeah, oh, yeah. before. 
time and time again with with scotch um this being no different in that it carries that really smoky flavor that you get from some of those charred meats but with a seafood a softer seafood like a like a scallop or a shrimp um i could see that really just there's almost like an whenever you get into peat you get into like a little bit of like an iodine brininess saltiness that is created from that effect of that kind of a drying effect on the grains and so uh but without further ado I yeah mean, that's let's, yeah let's, really well i would add this i would add that the the bold uh i would have the oysters oysters oh, okay. yeah 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 you were totally right that, that that that's what we had honestly so we're we're getting into the fifty five percent range. Uh, the big boys. Proof. Uh, okay, well, you didn't answer one question. How much would you pay for this whiskey? Ooh, for the Christmas? Christmas? Yes. I, I'm I'm could be in low triple digits. Uh, I could imagine uh, this being a hundred dollars. Yeah. 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 I could uh, see this is at eighty five dollars. Yeah. Eighty five. That's, that's quite good. What? Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure people. Some. Jeremiah I'm sure, is going to call you after this and order. No worries, I, I can else make that you have left. <laughs> Luckily, we still yeah, have yeah, some in SoCal. Bottles and a Are funnel, you and you're going there home. There we go. Oh, there we go. You're drinking, you're drinking this tonight when <laughs> you get home. So thrilled. <laughs> so, so, I, I got I'm you. Not, I'm not going to pass to uh, cast friends right now because Christmas edition is special as for something. Um, what we did with Christmas edition is a result of another experimentation. So with all those PX and Oloroso barrels, we are also experimenting. So we had an Oloroso single cast whiskey years ago. Uh, it sold out really quick. It was an amazing whiskey. So we saw that the Oloroso whiskey can Oloroso finish, uh, can have a good impact on our whiskeys. That's why we made the Christmas edition 2018, which was an Oloroso finish. Then we experimented with PX, which is another experimentation we had. In 2020, we will have a Christmas edition as a virgin cask, or ex bourbon cask, and Oloroso uh, cask. So it's, it's going to be a blend of three different uh, barrel types. Oh, wow. So that's going to be another experimentation. But during these experimentations, we come up with ideas and we create new bottles. And I have two of them behind me, which I will show them to you. It's going to be a sneak peek. They are in the U.S. right now. Just you for saw the it here weekend. first. <laughs> so we will have a standalone select cask Oloroso bottle and a PX bottle. There you go. So, so we're going to have you back uh, around Christmas. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully so. You're <laughs> so uh hopefully with the christmas edition these are also going to come in small bits because uh for now these are really limited uh releases and uh, we will start with the oloroso they are five years in bourbon barrels two years in px or oloroso uh, respectively and they are truly incredible i can tell you that and no peat here uh but like we tried it with a couple of people a couple of groups and uh, amazed with them uh, hopefully we'll have it this year but you know these are all the results of our christmas edition experimentation awesome we well like that. i said it's a it's a it's a nice divergence off of the path um that i'm because in my mind i'm thinking yeah explore this more and you already have which is fantastic no i i, I love it those cast finishes to me I, i'll buy anything that's higher proof and cast finish you have you have my full attention <laughs> yeah. and I, I will send you the samples of these uh, guys hopefully tomorrow or the other day okay? I, I would there love to yeah, opine on. on those bottles so we're moving on to the uh classic and peated uh now, now i believe these are cast strength or they're higher proof. yeah these are cast strength cast what strength. we call them is select casks is the select name cast. of the range yeah Select cask is also called to PX and Oloroso right now. So there are four different whiskeys in the range as of now. Well, so we have this wonderful brand ambassador in Europe uh, and UK, Shilton Almeida, uh, who is a native Goan. So he was born in Goa, raised there. And he describes this whiskey as Goa in a bottle. That is an intense nose, man. Woo! So this is an unpeated whiskey, like Brilliance or like uh, Nirvana. Uh, only first fill 
bourbon barrel aged, and the barrel is coming from the underground warehouse. Yeah, and that barrel at, on the nose is intense. It's just, this it is, is at hundred point four proof. Of. Now we're we're finally uh, we've come back to the bright tropical notes that you started with with Nirvana. Yeah. Um, is this in essence an underground aged, longer aged version yes. of Nirvana? Is that a higher uh, proof? Higher proof, like hundred ten point four proof. It's longer aged for sure. Uh, first fill bourbon barrel. Yeah. First fill, no second fill. There's no second. There's no third. It's only first fill. Yeah, I mean, this is this has gotten big barrel char written all over it. The vanilla is there. The a little bit of that fruit, that like papaya tropical. All I right, hope you have some water with you too. Let's taste it. Hmm. I can see it from your faces, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah it, well, it's one that requires silence because it requires, you know, just oh, processing to really, really dig into that. There's. There is, uh, there are incredible layers here. Uh, there is a reason this bottle is this long. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Ryan, have you had any of the uh, the Wolfburn single malt? Uh, I lately had the Aurora. The Sherry. Aurora. Um, it reminds me a little bit of those cast strength space side. Um, it has that crazy uh sort of centered like it's all on the tongue my gums are cool you know my my cheeks are good but my tongue is like puckered in it's really got a uh an effect that is pretty palpable i mean it's really really uh powerful yeah i mean you, it, with this you are everywhere from super zesty orangey um to yeah the orange lemon. lemon to you're you're all the way into the it's not dark fruity as much as as the christmas this no. is like this is the first time i'm going to say leathery for sure this is where we when we finally got into that category of just like thick rich uh, you know, I mean that 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 barrel character is just so pungent with this. I, it's what are you getting? Yeah, absolutely. This would be an A plus for me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He's like, boom. <laughs> we we have. I mean, we we carry this. So yeah, yeah. So you know, I appreciate what I, I appreciate about whiskey. Jeremiah is he's like, I know when I like it. Boom! Exactly. I yeah. know. I got it. <laughs> Jeremiah's not a man you want to uh, second guess. Yeah. He, he's yeah. not second guessing anything. He knows what he knows. What he knows. Um, I want to say this is like got to be one of the most complex whiskeys I've ever had with this color. It sure. is very light. It's barely darker than I'd say the the edited. Mm -hmm. Or maybe maybe the bold. They're both. They're all pretty light relative. To they're the they're they're all almost the same color, except yeah. for Christmas, of course. I would put this in a barrel batch cocktail, wouldn't you? I actually did, and it was successful. <laughs> you did. <laughs> you did, and it was successful. Yeah, yes. I would definitely put it. In the and house. this is uh, this is peated. This is no peat whatsoever. No peat. No peat. No no so Undeated. then every bit of that. There is a smokiness to me. It's all barrel. Really? It's all barrel. See, so uh, technically, you can call it the char level of the barrel. Um, so just behind the char level in the barrel, uh, you feel that toasted oak smell. Yeah. Coming out. So that's, I think, what you get. Like Technically, that's the explanation for it. Yes, it's, it's all that, and it's very strong. So Elijah Craig has a toasted barrel coming out. Nickers out of Kentucky has a series of toasted barrel sour mash, rye, mm -hmm. and bourbon. I am fortunate enough to have the toasted barrel bourbon and that toasted barrel mouthfeel is highly prevalent on this whiskey. Yeah. Um, it really has that sort of baked, uh, almost baked fruit. Uh, yeah. Well, what? What I generally, just how I generally describe this whiskey is there's a lot of like uh, tropical fruits like mango, papaya, 
on the nose, you feel those stone fruits, especially a lot of those uh, apricots. And there is a dryness coming from quince or ginger-like dryness at the very end. Apricot. Uh, yeah. I'm it's I just get, so like, amazing. Peaches Apricot. that have been cooked down. Yeah, like, big, yep. big like peaches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. High, like high characteristics for One sure. One question to you. This, is, this has been a discussion since I started this job. Uh, so when you are grown into, in, in a culture, you almost get all the smells from the, that culture easily. So a lot, of, uh, a lot of all my American friends tell me that this whiskey has peanut butter in it. I'm Turkish. I wasn't raised with peanut butter. I don't actually like it that much either. No. <laughs> so I don't get go, it that go much. Try, yeah. Go try Dickle. some of the whiskey out of Dickel. Out yeah. of uh, Tennessee. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I, I know it, but no. it's just. This no, is this bad. is. The, I feel like what they're maybe. I mean, not mistakenly, because everybody has their own versions of it. But this is yeah. fresh baked pie all the way. I mean, that's what it is. Uh, for me, the peanuts is the next one. You'll see that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is good. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely impressed. Uh, it's it's an ext- it's just a wildly nuanced whiskey. I would drink. I don't even these. know what I don't even know what to exactly compare it to because it's got it's got those deep char bourbon ass so characteristics, but it's just leather all the way backbone bordering on something. I I, I would go to like if you want to compare it to something, I would go to um, Castor and Highland whiskey, maybe a little bit on the Milton Duff side. Um, mm. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, that that would be the best resemblance. Like a Mortlock, maybe Mort, old Mortlock, let's say. Mortlock, uh, or uh, you know, I'm at Kilcarran Wolfburn. A uh, little bit of Mortlock, a little bit of like Abelauer. Um, yeah, Abelauer. Yeah, that, if I had to draw comparisons, yeah. I would say this reminds me of the uh, Abu Nad Alba. Yep, yep, for sure. In Love. that it's light in color but full in flavor. Yes. And has a lot of that rich tropical fruit. And I just have to mention, the, as we are talking the color, uh, we don't uh, use any additional co- additive coloring. No, in any of our no. They're all natural. Yeah. Uh, for almost of all of our whiskeys, we are using no chill filtration, except Nirvana, uh, because. It's forty percent, so we have to use chill filtration with that. And the rest of the whiskeys, we don't use chill filtration. They're all so we we know Jeremiah is at an A plus plus. A plus, just A plus. This is your this is your favorite of the lot. The Christmas is my A plus plus plus. This is A plus. So Christmas was better than this. Oh, of course, because I I think it's more because I've never tasted anything like it. The originality. The originality. Of it do you, really and do you ridiculous. carry Christmas at your bar? No, I never even heard of it. What? Well, now. this ah, is going to change. It's going to change. change. You, yeah. you that's Messiah. You I'm gotta, just. I'm going to send people. people I'm going to send people that come to your bar the clip of you just going a plus plus plus. plus oh my <laughs> gosh! <laughs> Bathe me. Yeah. yeah. What do I'm, you think of it? Just boom, right there. I'm waiting for the Diwali edition. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm waiting for. Um, we will have some Diwali packaging next year. Next year, <laughs> it's just coming. Diwali packaging, and then, like, um, honestly, Christmas edition is almost coming at Diwali time. So, I mean, it's already it's crazy. The year's going it's by, month but before Christmas anyway. I but I'm at a I'm at a solid uh, 93 A. Is 93 is an A, right? That's yeah, a, a minus. 94, 94 is an A. A. I'm in 93. I'm at like the cusp of the A yeah, minus. Yeah, that's where I'm at. As um, well. I think this stand, you know. Uh, I brought up Abelauer because I took a lot of that stuff and Abelauer uh, won like one of the best whiskeys of the year. And this, this is right there. This is in that realm for me. I am going to savor every drop of this bottle and oh, give it out sparingly uh, to people that really understand whiskey. Yeah. And Personal here, experience. This is a great whiskey for cigar smokers. Yeah. I see. I would have said that on the Christmas or the bold. This is more of somebody that appreciates the cast strength, yeah, but also can really have that refined sort of somebody that can very quickly dive into a whiskey and and appreciate some of the more nuanced subtleties of of what it offers. No, we'll try it when I come there. Don't worry. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. So where are we ending here? 
So we are up. Let me pri say the price too. This is a hundred dollar bottle. Uh, okay. Classic. Okay. Yeah. Just to say and that. Is the and age different on these two? The the they are the same and classic. different. Like they like they are the same oh, age, but peated and classic. Let me say that. Let me reset. The age on the classic and the peated cast strength. Where are we at on the age? Uh, we are at minimum eight years. Minimum, minimum eight, eight years. years. Yeah. Yeah, eight years. Eight years. So eight plus. I don't have a limit there because you know we don't have a lot of choices. Eight to twelve, most probably. Eight to 12. Out of two. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, so we are going to peated right now, the last whiskey, and I describe peated as a bipolar sibling of classic, and that's not a bad thing. I love being. I, I love having bipolar siblings. It's just so much fun because um, classic was unpeated. This is heavily peated. That's the main reason. And we are only using Highland peat with this, so peat from Aberdeen. And as you can hear the sound, this is a new bottle, so cheers. Yeah, cheers. The nose is all of the things you got on bold amplified to the next level. It's the most expressive nose on the table, hands down. I would, say it's, I would say it's it's part and parcel with uh, the Christmas in terms of nose eccentricity. Uh, eccentricity, eccentricity eccentricity yeah there you go well we're on the last one you get a chance to it's different from christmas <laughs> yes yes it's totally different because it's got the peat because because when they said oh there's a little bit of peat on christmas i was like i don't get that um this one it's it is very prevalent on the nose immediately the, like there's peat everywhere the biggest uh, difference is bold is made with isla peat this is made with highland peat so different styles of peat peat is a um changing uh, thing you know it changed from geography to geography thing. yeah it's an organic thing because it's composed of everything partly decomposed and th that everything can be trees grass vegetation human impact which is uh human and animal impact which Even can be elevation. feces or whatever you said elevation, elevation right underground waters which is too important and we generally ignore that and rainfall these are all important things and when you go to Isla, you have those like salty underwater, uh, under, underground waters coming up. There's a lot of like storms and like it's a little bit colder. Then you go to Highlands, you have a lot of vegetation and especially human impact. Like you have the sewers and like we, we give a lot of disturbance to the earth itself. So it creates a different um, micro climate over there. So that human impact, that uh, climate and everything makes the earth to look to be different. And when you use peat, peat from Highland, it gives you a lot of those like sweeter tones, like sweet smoke or maybe barbecue smoke. And when you go to uh, go and do it in Isla, you have that uh, incredible salinity. You have that high uh, medicinal yeah. uh, notes. I think differentiating the source of where your peat bricks or blocks or, or the, the imported peat that you later smoke and use to dry the malting barley. Mm -hmm. um, the source of that peat is something I would imagine consumers would be fascinated to know about. Yeah, I'd love um, to see it on the bottle. It, you I'd know, love somewhere. to see it on the bottle, but I know that is a level of detail that would go over. Working on it. Working on it. <laughs> 99, 99 of 100 consumers would be like, I don't even know what Pete is. I don't even know what Highland is. I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. But at the end of the day, the whiskey nerds of the world and the people that are really diving into this, that level, you make such a good point that, you know, where a barrel rests, whether it's in Texas or in Florida or in Canada or in Goa, um, is just as different as where the Pete comes from be it you know isla or highland or or uh, space side or wherever it's fascinating that the effect you guys have made selective choices in the source of the peat that you import to dry your malted barley for your own whiskey yeah because it would be really easy to just go I, we got peat from where who yeah, cares we just blend it all together who generally cares that's enough for nine out of ten yeah, people exactly. but this level of detail i mean Hopefully, those that have stuck around this far into the podcast can appreciate. <laughs> Gosh, it's like it is the peat of the bold, but it's not as peaty as I expected it to be. I'm actually, I'm really loving this, like 
brandy cherries and orange rind thing that's happening for me. Uh, it's, it's just so complimentary to the peat. Um, it's it's not quite as as leathery, but it's it's and it's not overblowing on the peat it's nice. perspective it's, uh, either. It's it has a little bit of those candied peaches thing happening. For for me, it's a it's it's like like dark brandied cherries or something. It's it's wonderful. excellent. I mean, this is subjective, right? Because you know we're all we all have different palates. But I, yeah. to me. I think it's very earthy. Mm. And I think corn. I think very pilgrim. Grainy. I think, yeah. And definitely with a smoked meat of some sort. Ooh, yes. Like something absolutely. cooked in a tandoor, at least in our restaurant, like a lamb shank, you know, rack, like something very hearty. I'm going to go Moroccan on you guys yeah. and say couscous and uh, <laughs> a tagine uh, because this goes well with like a lamb tagine yeah. or uh we do, yeah, we do some of those um, sort of vegetables cooked with meats over uh, a bed of couscous. The dish so nice, you named it twice. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, it's a really robust flavor. Yeah. This oh, yeah. one really blows out. This is, unlike the bold, if you drank this, you thank God this is our last one because you'd be hard-pressed to taste a lot of finer nuanced whiskeys after this unless you had you know a tongue of steel <laughs> well Cause yeah because it's is, hanging out on this the tongue. is blowing me out this Ooh. has the longest most pronounced finish of anything we drank oh, even yeah. the christmas can't hold a torch to this finish holy shit I this mean, is at the end of the night when you're like hey i want to sit out on the porch this is it this is the last whiskey this drink. is the last one it's for the people who are last straggling bottle. it's for the it's for the people that are like Let's sit around and really appreciate. Here's something. a great term, you know, when when you're a good good enough customer at a bar, and you know, assuming the bars are all open up soon. If you're locking in, if you're doing a lock in, and the bars are closed, but you're still there, and they're they're closing the doors, and you're going out the back with the bartenders, this is what you're drinking. This is a lock in whiskey. When um, your heart is um, love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're tipping a hundred dollars a pour. <laughs> Honestly, this this can be something else too. So, uh, I've been frequently flying to LA because I live in Oakland. But I love it. Why haven't you come hang out, buddy? Yeah, Let's come on, this. man. Let's come hang on. out. He can't. See I will do it as soon as I can. So, what happened is on. So, I'm using this uh, smaller airplanes, uh, just with X. I don't know if you know them. Smaller jet planes that you can take like 20, 25 people. That's is really easy for me. So. That's one of the good thi- uh, actually they are cheaper than Southwest most of the time. <laughs> there you go, there you go. But one of the good things about those flights were I don't know if they are still the same was bring your own bottle thing. You you could actually give your bottle to the flight attendant and she can pour it for you. Ooh, that's yeah. Fancy. So you're saying so, we fly Jet Suite X, we won't get Corona, and we can drink all we want. <laughs> Is that what so you're I, saying? Not necessarily. I'm a responsible <laughs> drinker, Seth. <laughs> Don't put that in Don't writing. Don't put that on me. Yeah. Paul John, Sue, so, coronavirus, Jet Sweet X. We were uh, flying to here with two other uh, influencer fr- friends of mine, and we, we gave a bottle of Paul John Peter to the flight attendant just to serve us because, you know, it's, it's fun. It's 12, like it's noon in the day. And she came with that, and I asked for a glass full of ice and club soda. I, I just wanted to make a highball for myself because I had a lot of alcohol the former days and I didn't want to drink a lot. So the flight attendant poured me that, brought me all of that, and my friends had the same. And suddenly we have seen an increase in the number of orders for a highball throughout the plane. <laughs> and we finished a bottle of peated in 45 minutes. Oof. Wow. wow. Just making highballs. Okay. It's an expensive highball, but it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think um, if you if you are put off by the intensity of the proof and or the peat or both at the same time, I think adding a little lemon and uh, club soda to this could be a very formidable cocktail that will 
get you where you're trying to go. Oh yeah. But it will also um, mellow to the degree that you can actually taste some of the more refined flavors of the whiskey while also amplifying them with the citrus of a lemon and the, the uh, carbonation of a soda water or club soda. Right. Um, I w I would, I would hate to waste this on a cocktail. I know. I don't, I wouldn't um, mix it, but personally, <laughs> I mean, I've got so much whiskey here that I would throw in a cocktail in a heartbeat. I'm at a, I'm at a probably 90, like an A minus, yeah, that's, a low, that's a low A minus, uh, maybe high B plus 89. I think I like the last one just I think the classic. Slightly more. If I'm, just if I'm, slightly. If a gun to my head, I would say classic over this. Yeah. Only right. because I love, I love the strength and power of the, the, the classic with the fruity notes. Right. Cause it's so balanced. And this is more of like, I feel like more people could create this amount of flavor and robustness by upping the proof on an already good whiskey. Whereas classic is so nuanced. It's yeah, so refined. For sure. It's so special. Um, I'm going classic as my, my, my a minus a, um, mm. and this, this peated is awesome. Just, just a notch just a, below. A notch just below a classic. Hair below. I'm at classic. Yeah. Agreed. What do you think? You, you know, I don't guy. love peated. You don't but, love peated. Yeah, but yeah. this I would drink. Okay. Over okay. the bold? Oh, over the bold. Well, you like it, it better it's than got all, like it's it got that, that higher proof. It's got yeah. the mouthfeel. More feel. flavor. I yeah. mean, this is the kind of thing where the last sip you take, 30 minutes later, it's still hanging out. Yeah. I would drink bold during the night. I would end, I would exactly. only end the night with peated. So I'd give it an A minus. Nice. Hey, that's high price. I can appreciate oh. that. Yeah. Jeremiah doesn't like peanut whiskeys, but he actually <laughs> likes three it. out of He's three out of out. four peanut whiskeys. Have, have, the right food. You, you know? may yeah. have converted uh, <laughs> one more one more guy to the peanut world. There you go. So, uh, you know, Jeremiah Karai, you know, you guys work with these products. You guys, uh, Karai, you sell these products. You know, Jeremiah, you have to represent these products to a uh, very interesting community of people that are coming in that are of the culture but don't even know mm -hmm. about it so Absolutely. you have to educate people on their own you know roots and heritage in this brand um and and this category parting words both of you uh, karai why don't we start with you and we'll end with jeremiah parting words well first of all it was a really good experience for me to be with you guys and tasting all of these again because you know uh, virtual life is pretty different than what we are used to, and I would be, I would definitely be in the bars normally or restaurants trying these. Maybe we would be trying these all together at Jeremiah's restaurant. Yes, yes. At the we same time, nice and ho oh, hopefully yeah. we're gonna do that soon. Next, next year we'll have up. V two of this whole podcast, but it'll we'll be do the podcast at Spice there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. I would say like in a world uh, that whiskey is right becoming trendy every second which is right now and we had the scotch uprights we had the japanese whiskey uh becoming trendy we had the taiwanese era but what was missed throughout the days were the indian whiskey indian drinking culture which is huge which is incredibly huge and that's where the single malts are coming because all the three distilleries that are making indian single malt whiskeys amrut rampur and paul john they are doing truly incredible work over there they are honest to their roots uh they want to do everything in the right way and what they are producing is like amazing like with, when you compare with most of the asian whiskeys or uh scotch whiskeys you will have a higher quality of product and honest product that's what i love and i'm a big uh supporter of transparency act in whiskey business and that's another thing for me with Paul John or Amrit because we are trying to do uh, what's right for the business. And yeah. that's what, what I say, like, yeah. To go back and listen to our American single malt episode where we drank, uh, I think, seven single malts from seven states. Yep. And you won't find any A's in the whole lot. No. Uh, we drank Texas single malt, you know, Washington single malt, California single malt. 
I would take pretty much anything on the table. It's, over, it's, over it's just it's any of these California. It's an exciting category. American it's an wealth. exciting category, especially considering the price point. Yeah, I mean that's that's the biggest thing. It's not just that it's a it's a new area for whiskey for a lot of consumers. That's di- that's similar to what they might know, but slightly different in its own new respect. But also, the price point that it's coming out at is absolutely fantastic, which is why, in most respects, you know, at least me personally, I overestimated the price I would pay for many of these, and a lot of times I underestimate the price I would pay for many things too. Exactly. So. I'll just end up with this: the Indian whiskey, Indian single malt whiskey, will be. Uh, producing better and better products every single day because we are getting older and we are also learning from our mistakes too that so that's something we do sure. and in the following years i am believing that indian whiskey will become a trend like scotch whiskey today like japanese whiskey today and but what i also believe is it's gonna going to be a stronger like having a stronger base because we are taking care of every step we are um uh, putting it in front of us, which means we are taking care of our stocks, inventory, the product. So we won't have a shortage of product in the future because we are all, we also already thought of that uh, for the future. So that's, that's how we approach to the business. And I, I hope that if the world stays at least a little bit better than this, uh, we'll have better times in the future and we'll, we'll hear Indian single malt whiskey more in the future. Yes, Thank you absolutely. I very much agreed. Sure I would I actually am. add to that, uh, Karai, because I, I think that at least I, I can only speak from experience and the guests that we that we serve and the a lot of our Indian guests definitely have a deep respect and appreciation for the single malt. And I think that that's the kind of the difference is that it's not just something to, to drink and down, but it's they really it's really a sense of, com- uh, it brings community together and it's something that they all bond on. It's special. Uh, but they don't know about these great Indian whiskeys as much. So I, 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 I look at it as a mission of some sort. Just yeah. kind of educate them on, look, this is what's you know, authentic, something that you can be proud about. Do you feel more uh, connected or proud of your own culture in that? And did you... you- Correct me if I'm wrong. Did you grow up in India? I'm not from India. Not from India. I was born in Singapore. Singapore. Yes. And um, I grew up all over. All over. here in New York. Yes. Wow. Um, East Tennessee. So random. You've been so random. Okay. Plenty of places. Yeah, plenty of places. Uh, But this is definitely something, uh, just just from being behind the bar at Spice Affair, this is something to be really proud about. Uh, Yeah. There's a wide variety of... Flavors, uh, and, and, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Uh, no, and I think, and it really accentuates Indian food, which is wonderful, because it really, you know, if you if you're coming to a restaurant like Spice Affair, you have something to pair with almost everything that we have. It's yeah. one of a kind restaurant, yes. and I can speak, you know, the first time I ever had any kind of Indian fusion too, because they have like tikka tacos, right, and you have, I know, when they bring to the table, like even when you sit down, you have these multicolor. Um, they're like uh, dried fruit chips. What yes. are they? What are they called? Uh, puppets. Uh, what's that? Yep. Like puppets. Puppets. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> and you have all those dipping sauces, right. like the mint, and the, what's the red one called? Uh, you mean the vindaloo? In the in the dipping sauce when you get the oh uh, tamarind. Tamarind. Yes. So when you have the tamarind and the mint sauce, and you, you're having, you're even transported to another world and and another you know uh, culture. And you sit down at Spice Affair, um, and I, I would love to see the restaurant like cut some of those single malts right. for these, right? Some of those Scotch single malts and bring these in because yeah. I think there's very little that's happening in the Scotch world that isn't happening in some of these bottles, right. and why not represent you know the culture? I, I think you know our owners are very innovative. They, they, oh yeah, they serve things like <laughs> yeah. Duck pancakes. Um, duck pancakes? Yes. Fuck. I'm getting hungry here, guys. Yeah, hey, I know. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Date and walnut uh, kofta, which would go so well with the classic. Date and walnut kofta? Yes. Wow. And those are, um, you know, they do a, a cocoa leaf flower. It's called 
favorite thing in the world. <laughs> that would go with the uh, Nirvana. If so, vegan, are you open for dine out right now? I'm sorry. Are you open for dining out right now? Like, can we can we get food from um, the I restaurant? To go only until this pandemic. I mean, they opened for briefly, and then you know we got the order. California, yeah. man, they'll California. fuck you up. Okay, <laughs> but when, when, when I when I was it's in... going to reopen and it's gonna rise, and it's a no, no. I don't just say that because I work there, but it it is some of the best food. It really is. Yeah, I mean, I say first, first, like, I mean, again, like, if you're talking Indian food in LA, it, it always comes up in the conversation. Yeah. I no didn't, way. I didn't even consort with or, or consult with Cameron before this episode. I had no idea you had been there. Oh yeah. Before yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I used to live near there, so I used to go there not just to try to sell bitters, but yeah. to also <laughs> uh, carry all those bitters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every single one of his bitters. Yeah, because we do cardamom and clove and cassia yeah. and some some great you know Indian style flavors that you can build into like the yeah. Mumbai Mule and right. all those great uh, drinks. But it's just it's not. You think Beverly Hills? Okay, I'm going to spend way too much. It's not expensive. It's not overpriced. It's you get way more than you pay for when you go there, and it. You will not have a bad meal. You can't order wrong. It's it's that kind of a yeah, place. Yeah, absolutely. It's an institution. Yeah, in life, it is sure. an institution. Yeah, it really that's is. That's how and, I describe uh, it. You know, I, I will honestly tell you this: like, I didn't have a lot of Indian food when I was in Turkey, so I met Indian food technically here in the states, and I had some amazing food in some great uh, San Francisco restaurants. But at the same time, I went to Goa, and I had this incredible street food and like oh, all yeah. those fascinating restaurants and everything. So right now, my Indian, like whenever you say Indian food and you tell me about lamb kofta or like tikka tacos, which sounds awesome, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And happy hours. No. The best happy I, hours. I, I, I'm looking forward to come there. And worst case scenario, if you're we're still doing tikka tacos, we'll, we'll get the food. We'll get the <laughs> food. Right, I'll guys, bring the whiskey. Uh, this Thank was you. a phenomenal taste. Yeah, this was a blast. And education. And uh, I thank you both, Jeremiah and Karai, for coming on the show. Um, we look forward to revisiting the brand as it grows and, and new new additions come out. And uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Everybody- well, cheers, guys. Hello, everyone. Cameron and Seth here. Just a few more things before we wrap up. First, you can always head on over to cartelhour.com for the show notes, which will include links to all the spirits mentioned and, of course, consumed on the podcast. Absolutely. If you're interested in purchasing any of the spirits mentioned on the podcast, go ahead and click any of the links to be taken directly to those spirits or visit castcartel.com. They are America's largest online premium spirits marketplace and have been featured in Rolling Stones Magazine, Men's Journal, The Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Market Watch, and many others. Yeah, they are awesome and super mobile friendly too. They're a fantastic resource to search through different types of spirits and their platform is easy and straightforward. If you don't love driving around to every single liquor store in town and hoping they have what you're looking for, Cask Cartel is certainly the best e-commerce spirits platform I've personally come across. Couldn't agree more. And you can find them on social media at Cast Cartel, and you can find us at Cartel Hour for the podcast, where you can find information about upcoming episodes and live tastings at the Infusory. And speaking of those live tastings, for those living in or visiting the Los Angeles area that are truly intrigued, if you want to drink along with us, we would love to have you come and enjoy an evening at the Infusory to drink through a carefully selected assortment of spirits. We offer custom flights and have a robust library of over 700 spirits to choose from. Visit our website for more information on how to become a member of the Cartel Club. And if you're a spirits brand that would like to be featured on the podcast, please email us or send us a direct message on Instagram. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And remember to always drink responsibly and in good company.